Today I'm going to show you how to make newborn or baby scratch mittens that actually stay on. So many times you get these and they don't ever stay on baby's hands, but these stay on perfectly. I use them for all four of my kids and you can use any kind of fabric you want on the outside, cotton, flannel, minky, anything. And on the inside, I would suggest something soft like minky, flannel, fleece, um, or anything that just feels nice on baby's hand. So the first thing you're going to do is go down to the description box below and click on the link to get these pattern pieces. Print them at home and go ahead and cut them out whatever size you want. They come in multiple sizes. And then you're gonna gather your supplies. Here are my supplies. I'm going to be making this for a zero to three month size and they fit newborn size quite nicely. And your elastic, I suggest using 1 8 inch elastic. It doesn't matter the color because it's going to be hidden on the inside. And on the pattern piece, I've included the measurement. So you just line up your elastic with the measurement on the pattern piece according to the size you're making. And go ahead and cut them out. You're going to need two, one for each mitten. And you're also going to need two safety pins. Now I've already cut out my outer mitten pieces. You need two for each mitten. And this is for my inner mitten. Again, this is reversible, but I'm just using white fleece on the inside today. And you're gonna stack four pieces of fabric right on top of each other if you don't have a directional fabric. Trace around the top fabric and you can cut it out all at one time. It just saves time and patience when it comes to cutting. Now that we have all of our mitten pieces cut out, we're going to work on making our first mitten. With the right sides together, you're gonna to place your fabric on top of each other. That's the pretty sides of the fabric. Do it for the lining and do it for the outer piece of your mitten. Now you're going to sew using a 1 4th inch seam allowance all the way around the curve of each of your mitten, leaving the bottom piece open. Again, you're not going to sew those bottom pieces closed. Here's what it looks like all sewn. Going around those curves can sometimes be tricky. Just sew slowly and use a small stitch and it should work just fine. You can see I have the bottoms that I did not sew and I left those open. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clip notches up to your stitches, making sure not to go through your stitches. But anytime you so curves, you want to do this so when you flip the fabric right side out, your fabric doesn't pucker and it lays nicely. Do it for the inner mitten and the outer mitten. Once your notches are completed, go ahead and get your lining piece and flip it right side out. I like to use a chopstick to smoothen out my seams and make sure they're poked out. And please forgive my fingers, I have a toddler and we were coloring and painting today. So now you're going to get your lining piece and put it inside of your outer mitten piece that is still not flipped right side out. And you're going to line them up so that your side seams match up. So open it up once it's tucked in there and line up your, your side seams. Once you have the side seams lined up, go ahead and pin or clip them in place. I like to use Wonder Clips. They hold perfectly and I don't really prefer pinning fabric if I can avoid it. Go ahead and put another pin or clip in one side of your mitten, but you're not going to clip the other side so that you remember that you're only going to sew around your mitten, but leaving that a gap about one and a half inches wide on that other side. So you're not going to sew one and a half inches to two inches on one side of your mitten. Now place it on your machine and you're going to sew it using a one fourth inch seam allowance and you're just going to pull and rotate your fabric as you sew so that you can get around the whole thing. Tinier things for the little babies are a little trickier to sew sometimes. So here's what it looks like when it's all done. 
Now you're going to go to the opening that you did not sew and you're gonna flip your fabric right side out. Just pull until it's all through the, the gap at the opening there. And then you're gonna smoothen out and poke out all of your seams so that it looks nice and crisp at all your seams. Again, I like to use a chopstick in my everyday sewing. If you don't have them, I suggest getting some. Now pinch the sides of your mitten and tuck your lining piece inside of your outer mitten fabric. Once you have it tucked in, go ahead and make sure you pull your seams up at the opening of your mitten so that everything lays flush. And here's what it should look like at this point. You still have your opening and everything is nice and tucked. And the next thing you're gonna do is make the casing for your elastic. You want your casing to be about as wide as the safety pin you're using. So that way you can feed the elastic through. You're going to take it to your sewing machine and just like you just sewed a minute ago, you're going to sew again using about a 3 8 of an inch to a half inch seam allowance to make that elastic casing. And again, you're gonna sew it the same way. You're going to sew all the way around, pulling your fabric around as you need to when you're sewing. You're gonna sew around the entire diameter of your mitten top. You're not going to leave a gap like you did before because we're going to feed the elastic through the gap that we already have in place in just a second. Now we're going to feed the elastic through our casing by opening up your safety pin and go ahead and poke it through one of the ends you can go ahead and put your safety pin in the other end of the elastic as well if you want. Then you're going to go through the hole in the top of your mitten and feed that safety pin all the way through until you get back to the hole. Now I suggest putting a safety pin in the other side as well so your elastic does not go through the casing because you don't want to do that quite yet and it holds it there in place so it doesn't fall through the casing when you're tucking it through. Once your safety pin comes out of that gap, go ahead and pull it up. And then you're going to pull your elastic as tightly as you can out of that casing. Take your safety pins out while you're still holding the elastic. And then you're going to tie a tight knot by putting those two pieces of elastic together, wrapping it around two of your fingers, and then pulling it up through that hole right there. Once you get it, you're gonna pull it very tightly and you shouldn't have more than half an inch of elastic hanging over that knot. You wanna make sure it fits correctly. Once you've got it pulled tightly, go ahead and tuck that knot into the casing and push it out of the way of your gap. Now you're going to work on closing your gap. Go ahead and put your fingers to the sides of those seams and it should automatically kind of Push your fabric inward so it's flush with the rest of the fabric, and then you're going to top stitch all the way around the top using about a 1 8 inch seam allowance. You want to get as close to that edge as you can, and you're doing it using the same method as before, just rotating that fabric as you sew so that you don't sew any creases as you're sewing this around. Now that you have the elastic put in, your fabric will pucker. You just want to stretch that fabric with the elastic as you sew around the diameter of the top of your mitten. What you do want to do is make sure that you start sewing where you have that opening. I forgot to do that here as you can see so I'm having to play with it to make sure it stays lined up. So make sure you start sewing over that gap so that way it closes first. Now you're gonna repeat this process for your second mitten and you are all done. They are super cute, they actually stay on and they're great for no scratch mittens, but they're also good for colder weather when you line them with fleece like I did. 
Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel to see all of my new easy step-by-step -step sewing tutorials.